Hello students of dynamics, this is Dr. Dan Baker with another video talking about rigid body relative acceleration. And today we're going to look at a case called additive motion. Okay, so there's four bar linkages and additive motion. If you're curious about the differences between those, search for additive motion uh, in my playlists and you'll find another video that contrasts the two and shows some interactives and the details of what is additive motion and um, how it's different than a four bar linkage. But today I'm going to look at the application of this idea on a relative acceleration problem. We're going to draw out a bunch of vectors, show you the equation that we use, and kind of map everything out. All right, so first of all, we have a wheel. And this wheel here, let's assume, is moving in a direction that would be negative from the right-hand rule, right, a clockwise direction. And so we could draw here our omega of OA. And it just so happens that over here at point A, there's a pin. Now this pin is not attached to something non-moving like point O is, it's just attached through this disc. And here we have this arm AB, which is also rotating. And let's say it's rotating in this direction here. I'm gonna call this my omega of AB relative to OA. Now I realize this is kind of a non-standard notation. I like this notation because it's basically using the same kind of relative relationship as our linear vectors are, right? So this is essentially saying that AB is swinging around point A at this omega, okay? So it's a relative omega, which is then attached to a moving body. We'll talk about how to deal with that. Additionally, let's say that both of these bodies are slowing down. So we have an alpha, an angular acceleration of OA positive from the right-hand rule, which is counterclockwise. And then here as well, our alpha of AB relative to OA is going to be positive from the right-hand rule as well. Now, these two don't have to be going in the same direction. We could have an alpha of OA, which is slowing down the disc, but maybe AB is going faster. Um, that's just the directions I chose for this example. All right, so looking back at those equations for our angular velocity in an additive case, we can write that our absolute omega of AB is equal to the absolute omega of OA plus this relative omega of AB relative to OA. So fundamentally, body AB is moving at the sum of this relative and this absolute. And so if they're equal and opposite, it would turn out that this arm right here would stay vertical and would just go around and around the circle and curvilinear translation, but it would have zero omega because the sum of the two uh, would equal zero. We can do the same thing for our alpha. So we can say here that alpha of AB is equal to my alpha of OA plus my angular acceleration alpha of a b relative to oa all right so only in additive motion do we have to worry about doing this for four bar linkages all the omegas and alphas are kind of independent they are based upon geometry but there's nowhere that we're going to add them together okay so a distinct difference between four bar linkages and additive motion cases all right so as we look at our fundamental equation for acceleration we can write that acceleration of b tangential plus acceleration of B normal is equal to. Now, one thing to notice here is I am writing this point that's like the furthest from my pin, furthest from the ground um, here at point O, and I'm putting that on the left-hand side of this equation. I find that that typically works best, okay? So instead of um, putting point A over here on the left-hand side, point B, because then everything on the right adds up to the total motion on the left, and it's just kind of the cleanest form overall. Okay, so back to our equation. Uh, we have our acceleration of A tangential plus our acceleration of A normal plus our, I'll go ahead and write these in their relative form, our acceleration of B relative to A tangential plus our acceleration of B relative to A normal. All right, now keep in mind that as you multiply these subscripts, you can end up essentially uh, by canceling these terms, right? The A is going to cancel with the A underneath, and we get B is, uh, B is equal to B. That just confirms we have everything in the right order. Now, to expand out these last two terms, we can also write these, the first one, as alpha 
of AB crossed with my R of B relative to A, and adding on to that my normal term, which is my omega of AB squared in the negative R of B relative to A. Now just to emphasize, this must be an absolute acceleration and this must be an absolute velocity. So you must use these absolute values. Okay, so we don't want to use our original ones as given in the problem that were right here. We actually want to use the absolute ones after we add this relative angular motion on top of the absolute relative motion of the wheel. All right, let's draw these vectors. So I think I preserve that, fit everything on here. Let me move this up just a touch and add on my additional arm. Okay, so we have our fixed axis pin point O, we have point A, and we have a dot up here on the other end, point B. So let's go ahead and draw these different terms. So to start with, position vectors are really key. Let's draw this position vector here. This is my R of A. And a second position vector from here up to here, this would be my R of B relative to A, right? A relative position vector. Now to keep this drawing a little cleaner, I'm not gonna put my vector arrows above. You don't have to on diagrams because your vector is right next to it. It's really just a label of that vector. So let's look at our velocities first. We do need to get the directions and values of all of our omegas because those omegas will show up in our acceleration in the normal terms. Okay, so uh, we were given in the problem our omega of OA, so that one's taken care of. And because omega of OA is negative from the right-hand rule, we also see up here that omega of AB relative to OA is also negative from the right-hand rule. So that gives us pretty good, not pretty good certainty, but 100% certainty that my absolute omega of AB is also going to be negative from the right-hand rule. It's the same case, let's go ahead and add them on here since we're talking about these terms, for my alpha of OA, because it is positive and the relative one was positive as well, we're gonna have alpha of AB. All right, so given those terms, we can take a look here first at the velocity at A. So my velocity of A is gonna go perpendicular to this position vector. So this would be my VA. Now the next term we'll take a look at is our relative velocity B around point A. Okay, that's gonna be 100% due to our omega of AB, which is right here. So we'll end up having a velocity of A relative to B, which is going to the right. Okay, going to the right because I have an R vector that's going up, I have my omega that's negative, I could start with that uh, vector going down into the screen, curling my fingers toward point B, my thumb should go over to the right, so that's using the point fingers, curl into the second vector, and then the cross product is in the thumb direction, you could also use the three finger right hand rule if you choose to do that. So that gives me my relative velocity. Now, one thing that's interesting about these additive motion problems is that we don't have the information right now to tell the direction the, uh, for the absolute velocity at B. Okay, so if I draw the matching equation to the acceleration one here above, we could write this as VB vector is equal to VA vector plus VB relative to A vector, right? My relative velocity equation. Now notice that I did put my vector arrows over here because this is in the equation. And if I didn't put them above here, I'd be worried was I talking about a vector or a scalar, but over here they're really just labels. And so you can choose whether or not to put your vector arrows over on the diagram or not. So in this equation to the right, we end up basically drawing a vector triangle, or we could. Okay, so let me draw that triangle so you can see what it looks like. So VB is over on the left-hand side. That's what we're gonna add up to. On the right-hand side, we have VA. VA goes up. Velocity of B relative to A comes over to the right. So we are basically starting here at this point and we're ending up here at this point and we're gonna do the same thing with VB. 
And so it turns out that VB as an absolute velocity vector must be moving up to the right because it's adding together the velocity here at A plus the velocity of, oh, and I labeled this wrong, an intentional error, but a good one to learn from. I labeled this here as the velocity of A relative to B. Let's go ahead and fix that. This is the velocity of B relative to A because it is based upon the R of B relative to A, and it is also coming out of point B as opposed to point A. Sorry about that error. Hopefully you caught that already. All right, so there's my velocity of B relative to A. Now I can do the same thing with my acceleration terms, and those acceleration terms would be the following. I have an alpha of OA positive from the right-hand rule, therefore that will drop my acceleration at point A tangential vertically downwards. My normal is going to come over here to the right, acceleration of A normal. So that takes care of this one and this one. Um, the last or the next two that I could take a look at would be my relative terms over here. They're going to be based upon this R vector, right, because it's looking at the same relative term, B relative to A. So I have an alpha for this body, which is positive from the right-hand rule, slide my fingers up, curl them up toward point B. Now I say up, I mean out of the screen, curl them toward B, my thumb goes to the left. So this would be my acceleration of B relative to A tangential. And then my normal is going to drop back down here along R, acceleration of B relative to A normal, um, always in the negative R direction. Okay, so once again, in order to find our absolute acceleration of B, which is why I like drawing it over there on the left-hand side, I'm just going to add together all of these terms over here on the right. Um, my tangential acceleration at A, my normal acceleration at A, and the two relative accelerations of B relative to A. So that's the general idea how we can map the linear and angular velocities. We can take a look at these relative angular velocities and accelerations and convert them into absolute so that we can use them in our equations and we can follow through then with all of our linear terms, not forgetting that there's both tangent and normal for acceleration. Hope this helps you get your head around these type of problems, and thanks for your time today.